It's the story of an American held in a dark Venezuelan prison. Then all of a sudden, they all kind of lined up. They pointed their guns at me. And this is the point where I thought, I'm going to die today. I'm Becky Bruce. I spent a year working on Hope in Darkness, which now has more than 2 million downloads. Find it on kslpodcast.com or wherever you listen to podcasts. You know, and we say that quite a bit on this podcast is it's my recovery. And we say that if, if, if there was a one size fits all, we wouldn't be in the epidemic that we are. Yeah, I mean, that would be the convenient, nice thing is if there was one proven method and everybody could use it. But uh, everybody's an individual. Um, stories have a lot of similarities. And I think that's the power in sharing the stories. But at the same time, going through that similar story, you have your individual experience and therefore you have individual uh, recovery. And I think, you know, what you're saying, Brandon, and what so many people have told us is uh, once you make that commitment for yourself, for you, not for anybody else, not because you're in trouble, you know, not because you you have a federal charge against you, nothing, (laughs) you know, until you make it for yourself, then you you can't do any kind of recovery. But once you've made it for yourself, then you, you can find the methods that speak to you, and you can stick with them. Um, so for some people, those are very traditional, you know, 12-step type programs. A lot of people seem, from the stories we've heard, to use parts of those and then other things as well. What Were there any other things that stood out in your uh, recovery process that were helpful to you? Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, I, think, I think the most I got out of anything was, was – um, was realizing that connection was going to be key for me, you know, connection and, and, and replacing, replacing everything I had with, with building uh, a, a group of people that love me, a group of people that, that uh, want to help and, and be there. And what do you mean by connection? Um, I mean, a bond with somebody, some you're, you're, you know, you go to those meetings and you're able to relate with people that are going through the same <laughs> that you are. Um, and, and, and and we know that there's there's an end in sight. You know, you, you see it in those meetings. You see people, you know, with their uh, their victories, and you're able to celebrate that. And you start to build these bonds where, um, you know, it becomes family. You know, you know, you mentioned that the, that's the first thing you mentioned after you told your rock bottom part was that you started reaching out and um, and making connections. Do you feel like that was easier to do once you worked on? the loss of the relationship with your mom. I mean, you said in that recovery program, you did get some, some therapy, some treatment to work on that. I mean, to me as a psychologist, and I don't want to make a mountain out of a molehill, but I mean, you lost your primary relationship with your mom at such a young age that you self admittedly created an angry kid in you. Once sounds like once you worked on that, the the thing you wanted to do was reach out and make close, intimate connections with other people. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. I want. I wanted to feel things. Yeah. I wanted to be able to feel what I hadn't for a long time. You know. And so now uh, let's move on to kind of the other part of your story. So you've been sober now for how long? Um. So so in a, normally when people ask me that. Um, and it seems to be, uh, I mean, it, for some people, like when I was at Pinnacle Recovery Center, there was guys that say, I'm not going to start counting my days until I'm out of rehab. There's guys who say, I'm not going to count my days until I started out of detox. And other guys would be like, I'm not a counter. You know, yeah. and so, yeah. I mean, it, for some people it's pride. For some yeah. people it's personal. W- what are your thoughts? Um, so this, this is, this is, these are my thoughts on it. I'm... I think that um, people focus on on clean time so much. Like if you're if you're a recovering addict, I guarantee you, if, if somebody knows you're in recovery and, and you meet them on the street, the first thing they ask you is how much clean time you have. You know, it's one of the, the first things. But you know, working working with the people that we work with and, and doing this for so long, I've realized it's it's not has nothing to do with the time. Time is is nothing. It's what you do with it. You know, and so I guess my normal response is. Don't ask me how much time I have. Look at what I'm doing. You know, recovery isn't about time. Recovery is about uh, getting a quality of life. You, you know, know, there were some times that we in uh, recovery, we'd go to AA meetings and some guys would stand up and go, hey, we don't want to hear from you unless you've got three months clean time <laughs> under your belt. Right. And or we don't want to hear from you unless you've got two years. And as a new guy sitting in those chairs, 
I want to hear about the guy who's got 15 days. Right. Because that's, that's more relatable relate to, to me. Yeah. You, you yeah. know, I mean, I think it's great that there's guys that have two, 15, 30, 50, whatever years, you know. I sure. want to hear all the stories, but don't. Don't gatekeep the guys are 15. I yeah, I don't understand that. I mean, maybe there's a purpose in that. But I would say that uh, the people that need it the most are the people that are just starting out that road. But I like what Brandon's saying, and that's a quality versus quantity thing, right, Brandon? Right. Where it's, you know, the quality of the time. So how do you – how have you been using your time since you've been uh, sober? Yeah, so, um, I, I mean, the I'll, I'll just start with the, uh, with my son. Um you know, I, I was, uh, I had about, I, I think I was, I was uh, about six months clean or so, and I had met a girl at a, at a meeting, actually, and... It's the 13th we, we, we did that. We, is, is like, that like, we did That's that what they call it. Very serious way. Is that like that. ordering off the um, menu? Yeah. We, yeah, we, uh, we, uh, we 13th step, and, uh, and I found out I was going to have a kid, and that was awesome. I, I have no other kids. I've always wanted a little boy, you know, um... And I got him, and he's awesome. He's the fattest, cutest, happiest little baby in the world. <laughs> he's 18 months old. I asked yeah. you off air, and uh, I do follow your guys' Facebook group, Addicted We Stand. And uh, you said one of the highlights of your life was being able to be there when your son was born sober. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, it was beautiful, man. I, I, I was able to feel. I mean, that's that's a huge thing for anybody, right? Like watching watching your son being born is is amazing and it's huge but like doing that just sober and you're just starting to feel things it was it was amazing you know i it's the best thing that's ever happened to me was him you know my 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 son's name is landon um he is named after my best friend that passed away from overdose um and he he's he's awesome man he's he's wonderful I can see you getting emotional. <laughs> he's, he's I, I miss him right now. He's he's amazing, man. I, I I stay at home with him most days and I take him with me when I'm on my travels and I'm going into treatment centers and meeting people and it's it's fun, man. What 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 do you think your journey is gonna teach your son? Um I I wanna give you know, so his his mother's also a recovering addict, you know, and so his his odds of, of uh facing addiction are, are high, you know. Um Whenever, whenever I have a, a time where it's, it's hard dealing with the people we deal with or, or I have an upsetting day, this, this world's not going to be any nicer to him than it was to me, you know, and, and I can make a difference for him. You know, there's, I've been given a cool opportunity where I can use my voice and, and help people that don't really have a voice, you know, and, and I think that, uh, that, uh, that's something he can be proud of. You know what I mean? You know, it's interesting that you say you've been given a cool opportunity. And I think I've been given a cool opportunity to work with Dr. Matt and do this podcast. But I also don't want to discount that, although it's a cool opportunity, it's something that I wanted to do. And you wanted to do something kind of special. And you started this Facebook group, Addicted We Stand. Yeah. What made you want to do that? And tell me kind of how it all began. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, in January of in January of 2018, um, another really good friend of mine had passed away. Um, his name is Trevor Cambray, and he's somebody that I had I had met in in recovery. We did recovery. You know, we we hung out. We played softball together. We went to the gym together. Um, we picked up girls together. Like he was he was my brother. You know, he's a friend. We we went through a lot of hard times together, man. Um, you know, he. He'd call me and and, uh, and tell me when he when he was struggling and drinking, and he he became really close to me. Anyway, he had he had passed away um, due to overdose last January, and it was hard. I'm me and my me and my 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 really good friend. It uh, there's there's three of us that kind of hung out together a lot, and and losing him was hard. And so we decided to to start a, a Facebook group um, where people could reach out, where they had an option to always have somebody there, you know, um, and. And, and it grew really fast. We started just by adding, adding our, our friends on Facebook. And then they started adding their friends. You know, the name's catchy. Addicted We Stand. People, it makes people curious what we're all about. And, uh, you know, within, within the first couple of months, we had like 3,000 members. Um, by the by six-month mark, we were up to like 10,000. And we just kept growing. Um, we saw that there was, there was obviously a need for what we were doing. We saw that, that us providing resources was something that was – was was needed out there um 
and so we 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 uh, we took it a little bit further, and we decided to, to develop it into a, a nonprofit organization. So we're fully licensed nonprofit now. Um, and and so when I say I was given a, a cool opportunity, I I didn't plan on doing this ever. You know, I was I was um, getting ready to have a kid, and we started this group, and and it just started blowing up, and my phone started getting messages, and and people needing help, and people needing help all day. And and so we I just started responding. I just started helping them, and and. Um, it took up my time like crazy and it was wonderful, but yeah, we, we just, we didn't plan this at all. It just, it so just... what is addicted? We stand. I mean, we've talked about it being a Facebook group and, and I'm a member of it and I look on there and the, the, the cool thing, Dr. Awesome. Matt is if, if you go to the <laughs> Facebook page, you can see, I saw this one lady goes, Hey, I'm getting off work and I don't want to walk through the bad part of town. Cause that's yeah. where I scored. Could somebody give me a ride? And I look down at the comments and there's 90 comments. Yeah, isn't and, that crazy? You know, and there's people trying to help out and there's other people. I that love just, that. They I just share that. their stories. And I've talked to you about this off air a little bit. But, um, you know, the anonymous part of some of the recovery, I think, helps and hurts. What I like is that everybody talks about it in the forefront. And this Facebook group is just everybody puts it out there. And it, it's not all harmonious on the website. No, you, probably you, not. You know, because some people say this is working for me and you'll have other guys go, well, that's stupid. But everyone kind of respects. But it's a real conversation. It's right? a re- and, and that's what we wanted to do with this and, podcast. And I think, you know, if. If uh, anonymity is what a person needs in order to get into treatment, that's great. But I think our culture, we talked about this earlier uh, before we started recording today. You know, I think I think there was a time maybe in the 40s and 50s when you, it needed to be anonymous. It was a dirty secret. Yeah, it was a dirty yeah. secret. You couldn't, you know, you, you were going to have major roadblocks in relationships and work and things like that. Um, but now it now it's such i'm i'm grateful that it's part of the conversation the our cultural conversation because now you can have something like addicted we stand where people can be honest about who they are and what they're struggling with and support each other in that and, and the honesty on this side whether is it's so a simple raw. simple ride but that simple ride could stop that person from relapsing and and so it, it's these small things that actually have big ramifications and and if we don't talk about it we're we're all alone yeah you're listening to project recovery we'll be back in a few seconds that's our that's our i mean sorry i don't mean to interrupt no you're that's, good that's our complete model man is is it's it you know, we, 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 what we try to do, we're a resource page, right? Like we, people can get on there, find resources. Uh, Rachel and myself basically all day, all day long, try to help people get in treatment. You know, we try to help them get insurance and those types of things. So how do you um, do that? I mean, I mean, cause I've had people reach out to me on this yeah. podcast <laughs> yeah. and then they go, I'm looking for, and they call them beds in the recovery right. world. I'm right. looking for a bed here yeah. or a bed in St. George or a bed in Ogden or a sober home. And people yeah. can get frustrated trying to find a place. Because, it, I mean, it can be maddening just to navigate this world, yeah. especially all the hoops and everything you need to jump through. And a lot of times when you're working your recovery, I, I know for me sometimes, you know, you're looking for a reason. Yeah. To, to, to use, your, yeah. you know. An excuse. An excuse. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Stub your toe. And, and what and, I think yeah. so great about Addicted We Stand is that these sorts of, this particular group uh, in particular is, uh, you know, run by people that are in that world. I'll tell you as a, you know, mental health professional, we sometimes get just kind of narrowed into what we do. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I know about uni and I know about those sorts of resources that are within my practice scope. But outside of that, to be honest, I don't really have a lot of experience. But you reach out to uh, uh, this Facebook page, and all of a sudden you have thousands of people that are out there, and they can say, I've been to this place, and it, it has an opening now. Or I've been to this place, and, and I wouldn't go back. I mean, they're, they're able to give their honest review, and so you have thousands of voices right there at your fingertips. If you're somebody who is struggling, I know that some of our listeners – have uh, made comments that they're frustrated. Where do I find a bed? Where do I find treatment that doesn't cost $30,000 a month? You know, those sorts of things. If I don't have insurance, where do I go? Um, And these are all questions and all comments that you can see on this page. And that's what's so unique about it. And so it's not just the page. You've turned it into a nonprofit charity. And so what else are you doing to give back? Um, Yeah, so we do do a lot. I mean, uh, Rachel here is is phenomenal. She, She... 
she helps do a lot of, of homeless outreach projects and things up here. We've been we've been doing a lot with um, with other organizations, um, you know, like like Fit to Recover or Utah Harm Reduction. Um, people like them that are doing the same kind of work we are, just from a different avenue. Um, my 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 take on on all of this, on recovery, on everything, is there there has to be a lot of different avenues, right? Um, and just like you had said earlier, our page supports every pathway to recovery. You know. I don't, I don't think there's anyone that can say, you know, this works for me, so you have to do it. Um, if somebody has to take a, a, a maintenance program like Suboxone or Methadone for, uh, for years, for months, whatever it is, if their quality of life got better than when it was when they were shooting up, that's what it's about. It's not about, I mean, my, my, my family didn't um, lose trust in me or hate me because, because I used drugs, right? My family hated me and, 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 and pushed me away and, or, or pushed themselves away from me and, and those type of things because of my behaviors, right? So if, if, if you have to go in every day and get methadone every morning, but you're taking care of your kids and you're working a job and, and you have a license and you're being a productive member of society, well, great, do it. And, and I'll support that all day long and our page will support that. But, but there's a lot of people that want to talk about their, their own way, you know? Um, but if they have to do that to get their better quality of life, then then why not support it? That's what it's about. It's not about being clean. It's not about you know. It's about having a quality of life and 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 living. <laughs> it's fascinating what you guys are doing. And let's swing the mic over to Rachel yeah. real quick because Rachel, you're doing something that's pretty important with the youth. Tell me about that. So we do well. We do a lot of different things. So we work with a another organization, and we get to. It's called Young People in Recovery, and they're a nationwide thing. And we get to go into treatment facilities, and and we do different types of workshops. And one of the ones that are the most important to us would be going and speaking at the youth facility. So every other Saturday, it's so awesome. We go in and we bring a couple of different people with us every other Saturday, and we we share our stories and we do different workshops and. We, we talk to the youth all the time, and, and it's beautiful. That's so important. Yeah. What, what sort of uh, response do you get from, from youth? Because youth can be uh, difficult. <laughs> you know well, what? How, how do they respond to you guys coming in? They love us. Because you're younger than me, there. but you look kind of old to them. Oh, yeah. No, I'm right? aging to them. Whoa, they're they're, they're, they're oh, to them. Pump the brakes there. there. Younger, <laughs> younger than me. Listen, I'm a grandma today, <laughs> pretty much. Beautiful. But, I, I was, you cut me off. I yeah, was going to yeah, say yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Next time. How beautiful I am. <laughs> Man, I, was just, I just, yeah. I've no. always had trouble with the ladies, I guess. Yeah. I don't no. know. <laughs> they, we've been going there now for, I want to say, almost a year. And so for now, they're used to us and they like okay. us and we've become something really important to them. So each weekend, if we bring somebody new to share a story, which everybody's story, as you know, is so diverse and it's so different. They accept it. Our group last week was so beautiful. Like we had gone right before we did this big outreach. I think it was last weekend. Yeah. And every like we had young 15 year old girls who were openly like as soon as we come in, they know they get to share something vulnerable with us and talk about things that you wouldn't normally just go talk to some random person about. But the youth is where it's at. I mean, most of us started drinking and using abusing some type of a substance when we were like, mo I'd like to say most of us between 13 and 15, like the really sad extreme stories are nine and 10. But, you know, these kids are they're at that age. They're 15 and 16 and 17. And some of these kids are like avid, like strong, hardcore using a needle already. I mean, there's wow. a kid in there. Well, and I shouldn't talk too much about it, but there's kids in there whose stories like they have me in tears. And you've when they built. Hear. You've. It sounds like you know the answer is you've built trust. Yes. You know you have authenticity and you've built trust, and so now that you guys continue to go in and work with these kids, they're having therapeutic, you know, experiences with you. I can tell. Oh, absolutely. You know when you say they're ready to share as a therapist myself, I know it's like boom. That's that's the stuff we're looking for. Is when a person is ready to open up and be authentic and be raw and share their experience. And if they can make those connections yeah. at a young age, we're so much more likely to help them stay away from a life of addiction. And yeah. that's what I, I that's one of my very favorite things in life is getting in and working with kids and helping them find a better trajectory in life so that they don't have to learn every lesson the hard way. Right. right. Yeah, you know, I think on this podcast we, we do focus a lot on recovery, but if we can prevent it, that prevention would be the in in any kind of medicine, mental health prevention is always where it's at. It's also always one of the hardest things to to, to create. Yep. 
So, uh, Brandon, let's have you take the mic back real yep. quick. And uh, so, addicted we stand. Uh, what's your relationship with your family now? Um, it's good. Yeah, I, I mean, for the for the most part, I've I think I've gained trust back. You know, I think that um, that what I'm doing is is showing um, is showing that that I'm making changes. You know, and, and uh, with with some family members, there's still a lot of time that I, I think until until there's that relationship back, and it may never be back. You know, this opportunity has afforded me the op the, the chance to talk to a lot of people. And one thing that I say, and I don't even know if it's good or not, but I say it a lot, so I hope it is, is that it took you a while to get where you were. It's going to take you a while to get back. <laughs> that's very true. We want change to happen right away. You know, and, and I, but I and think it that's, takes time. I think that's just as important for the family members of those who are in recovery. Sure. You know, I think, you, you know, when you get out, I had a buddy that was uh, in recovery with me, and he had uh, an opiate addiction and when he got out he went back to the family he was like what i'm fixed i'm well, good I'm to good. go <laughs> and 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 the whole family was like uh well we're not you know uh and yeah. that's one of the things that addicted we stand uh is also a forum for family and friends yeah. uh talk about that for a second yeah so um uh, we when we when we created the page and opened it up we um you know you're going through the different checklists on facebook and we we decided to keep the group open um which means Anybody in the public can see anything that happens on our page. Uh, and and we, we wanted to do that for the reason of, of raising awareness and, and breaking stigma. You know, if anybody spends five minutes on our page and just scrolls, all you're going to see is addicts helping addicts. Uh, you're going to see family members getting information uh, ab- about how to deal with, with, their, with their addicts, you know. Um, I think that it's also sort of like if you're a family member or a friend of somebody who's struggling – you're on the outside. You don't really get to be privy to those conversations and those thoughts that they're having until you get on like your Facebook page. And then family and friends can see those conversations happening right. and ask questions themselves and get resources and clarify. Uh, you know, the addict mind can yeah. be a very confusing thing to somebody who's not addicted if you're a parent or a family member. Right. And this is a great way for them to start to develop some understanding and connection back with the people they want to love and support. For sure. And so Addicted We Stand is the Facebook page, and this has become your full-time job. You drive around trying to help out addicts. Do uh, you have some sponsors that have been helping you? Yeah, yeah. And I, and I, I definitely want to talk about that because our – our organization, I mean, for, for probably the first six months of us starting, um, we were just a, a Facebook page. We hadn't gotten the, the, the nonprofit um, status yet, but we, we, were, we were putting people in treatment with no resources. We had very little money. We had, all we had was a passion and a drive, you know, and, and very little know-how. We, we figured it all out within, within the last year, and our sponsors came in, and, and uh, yeah, we, we have a, a bail bonds company called Breaking Bad Bail Bonds. Um, they have been huge for us. She, uh, the woman that owns that is, is one of my dearest friends now. Um, you know, she, she, and she came to our page and I'm going to tell a story cause it's actually really, it's beautiful. Um, she's been running a bail bonds company for a very long time and, and obviously developed a, a bad taste in her mouth for, for addicts. You know, she's trying to get money from, she's bailing out of jail. They're lying to her. Um, well, our, my lawyer, um, had actually introduced her to our page, I believe, or, or vice versa. I can't remember exactly. Um, but she, she, she she scrolled through our page and saw the addicts helping addicts. Um, she got in touch with us and she immediately was like, I want, I want to, I want to help you guys. Um, I mean, she, last year I, I didn't have a car and I was just doing, running the whole business for my phone. Um, she, and I was at, actually at the time I, I was spending so much time doing this. I think I couldn't even pay my phone bill. I was running addicted. We stand off of a Wi-Fi phone out of a little <laughs> apartment in Salt Lake. And, uh, she came in. She bought me this really nice phone. She pays my phone bill every month. She bought me a, a car, and she got it wrapped with the dick we stand all over it. So we, we draw attention. We go loud. We want people to know this is – keeping addiction taboo is not going to save people's lives. Not talking about this is not going to save people's lives. And she gets that. She helps us get it out there. So, yeah, our, our sponsors are great, man. I love that. She embraced something that irritated her, and she made it work better. Oh, yeah. She, she's, yeah, I mean, that's dude, great. She's been, she's been a, huge, a huge drive for yeah. us. You know, she helps me when, when things are tough. She's bought diapers for my kids because I couldn't afford them. You know, she's, that relationship is beautiful. It's, it's something that um, I, I love about our page, too, because it gets us out there in the community. I, I would have never been friends with her in the past. You know, I, I'm a recovering drug addict. She's a, a business owner, successful business owner. You know, but, and I, I go have coffee with her and we hang out now. We're, 
but it all came together on Addicted We Stand. We want to say thank you to both you guys for coming out here. And I want to say congratulations. Jill only swore twice. (laughs) 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 Can I get another one? (laughs) Yeah, there you go. Dr. Matt, any last thoughts? Yeah, actually I do. I have a thought, and um, it's, it's the following. I think the two of you have something very similar in common, and that is two things that seem to be at the core of who you guys are you're now using for your benefit to get the word out. For you, Casey, it's media. Casey has always been in the media. He's great at talking to people. He started this podcast. He's getting the word out that way. Brandon, for you, I just get the sense that being connected intimately, socially with other people has always been really important to you. And look at what you've done. You've created this this uh, forum for people to come together and be connected and help and support each other. And I just, I love it when a person really is authentic. They reach down inside and find out what do I have to offer because that's usually where the best things happen. And so I love the fact that uh, the two of you are using your natural talents that way. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, thank uh, you. Tilton. Uh, if you know somebody who needs some help, have them do what I did and give Pinnacle Recovery Center a call or check out Addicted We Stand. Thank you for joining Project Recovery. It's a KSL podcast.